Thunder shatayata, zota pane yata hoske yata. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout glory. Let's put our hands together as we receive and welcome our papa and the mama in the house. Let's celebrate their presence with a clap and a shout. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Welcome, sir. Welcome, uh, hallelujah. Lift your two hands above your head and let those hands be put together as we receive our Papa, Dr. Abel Damina. Glory. Somebody excited, shout a powerful amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's give him praise and glory tonight. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to come before your holy written word. And we thank you for always, always granting us the opportunity to fellowship in the light of your word. So tonight, the entrance of your word giveth light and it giveth understanding to the simple. Our hearts are excited about the light that will shine. And we decree that veils full of clarity comes by your word. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. And we decree that by the end of this service, Jesus is glorified and the body of Christ is edified. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. So say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service... I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. It's 30 days of glory 2022. Glory. Whoa. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self tonight as we get into the world. And we want to welcome every one of you connected to the service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. All of the social media community, brothers and sisters online. We want you to know we love you. We're glad you're in the service tonight. Do me the favor of inviting a friend, a loved one. Share the video, like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make sure you engage in the course of the service so that we have the kind of visibility that we require to get this word to the ends of the earth. We also want to welcome the radio audience in Aquaibom State. We're glad to have all of you in the service, guys. Call a friend, a family member, ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. All our campuses around the world, we want to welcome all of you citizens. We're excited to have all of you in the house tonight. And get ready, guys. We're going to have an adventure in the word of his grace. Can I have a powerful amen? All right, let's get in the word. We're looking at the fruit of the spirit or what we have concluded as walking in the spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 19. For the son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Now, he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. So we've said that Jesus is the fulfillment of all of God's promises. Jesus fulfilled every promise that God made. And then we concluded that when you want to talk about summarily the sacrificial work of Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, his glorification, you can say he gave us the spirit. Look at the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 8 where brother Paul communicated the same thoughts to the church in Rome. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So Jesus is the confirmation of the promises that God made to the fathers. Which means that in Christ 
all of God's promises made to the fathers has been fulfilled. One of those promises we've been looking at through the course of this month is Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36 26. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. A new spirit, then he calls it my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. And then we began to deal with the fact yesterday that man is three in one. Man is a spirit, has a soul, and lives in a body. Now, if you look at that Ezekiel again, chapter 36, verse 27. He says in 36, 27, And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Now, look at verse 26. There's something I wanted to pick out there. 26, verse 26, Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. So yesterday we took time to establish that the flesh is not the body. The flesh is the nature of the unregenerate man. The nature of a man without Christ. The nature of a man without the spirit of God is called flesh. And we did some study if you are not here I will encourage you to get the material of yesterday. So a new heart, a new spirit is what the believer has in Christ Jesus. So yesterday we concluded by saying, where is the challenge? If a believer has a new heart, a believer has a new spirit. So where is the challenge where a believer struggles with sin and still struggles with desires that are not godly and still struggles with thoughts that are ungodly. And so we began to deal with that and we're going to go ahead with that now. If my nature has changed, that is, my nature is not the nature of sin. Why could there be a struggle? It's not far-fetched. Why is there a struggle? Because... What baffles a lot of believers, and I've even had people say this to me, why is it that a lot of Christians who say they are born again are still acting like unbelievers? And then sometimes when people don't have the answer, they will now look for a cop out. It is these grace preachers. It is these grace preachers. As if they in their legalistic churches were living holy before the message of grace came. They were just careful sinners and perfect pretenders. That's what it is. Because where sin abounds, God's cure for sin is grace. The grace of God that brings us salvation cannot be the same grace that is making people to sin. The grace of God brings salvation. Sin shall not have dominion over you because you are not under the law. So under the law, sin has dominion over you, but under grace. Sin has no dominion over a man under grace because a man under grace is dead to sin and alive to God. So the question is, why is there a struggle or why do I still have bad thoughts? Why do I still have wrong desires? Why do I still have sinful actions? If my nature has changed. Now for the purpose of this teaching, let me explain this to you about man. Man is three in one. Man is a spirit, has a soul, and lives in a physical body. We can say man consists of spirit, soul, and body. The soul of man which for this teaching we can call the soul of man different from the spirit because usually the soul and the spirit are explained together. But for the purpose of this teaching, the soul of man, which is different from the spirit of man, is where decisions are taken. Where decisions are taken. The soul constitutes emotions. 
Our emotions are in the soul realm. The soul constitutes perceptions. Perceptions. And the will of a man is in the soul. The will of a man. And of course, the understanding of a man is in the soul. So the soul constitutes of emotions, perceptions, the will of a man, his understanding. And then we have the physical body, which is the natural body. At salvation, the soul of a man who is born again is given the work to be remolded and rearranged in such a way that it begins to align with the spirit of the man that is born again. The soul of a man that is born again is given the work to be remolded and rearranged in such a way that the soul aligns with the regenerated spirit of the believer. And oftentimes, if not all the time, that is where the challenge has been. A believer doesn't have a nature problem. He has a new nature. He's a brand new man. He has a new spirit in Christ Jesus. Now look at that Galatians where we concluded yesterday. Chapter 6 verse number 14. Galatians chapter 6 verse number 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom the world is crucified unto me. And I unto the world. Notice the term world. W-O-R-L-D. There are two words used for the word world in the Bible. The first word is the word cosmos. Cosmos. Which refers to the settings of the world. The settings. The designs. Because cosmos is physical. Physical. The designs and the settings. Where Mark chapter 16 verse 15 will say, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature into all the world. Talking about the physical, the physical world, the cosmos. So when he told them in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, tarry in Jerusalem and you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. When he said that to them, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth is talking about the cosmos. That's the world that you can see. Like you tell people, I have traveled around the world. I have been to Asia. I have been to China. I have been to Japan. I have been to India. I have been to the Americas. I have been to the UK. I have been to Europe. I have been to Africa. South and West Africa. I have been around the world. You are talking about the cosmos. You are talking about the physical world. So when the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and those that dwell therein. He's dealing with the cosmos. The cosmos, the earth, the physical earth and the things that dwell therein. That's why when some people say there, are, there is food offered to idols. Paul will say there are no idols. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the things that dwell therein. The trees, the root of trees. That they use for the concoction. They all belong to the Lord. The needles that they put on the guava tree. All belongs to the Lord. The chicken feather. All belongs to the Lord. The devil owns nothing in this world. The earth is the Lord. That's why brother Paul said. There are no demons. There are, I mean there are no idols. The gods are dead. What, what is he establishing? That the earth and the things that dwell there in the entire cosmos. Belongs to God. If you observe Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, look at the way brother Paul communicated. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So he calls Satan the God of this world. 
The word world in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 is not the same word world in Mark 16.15. Satan is the God of this world. Now, if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, Satan cannot be the God of the earth, the cosmos, which is the Lord's. So which means when he says Satan is the God of this world, he is dealing with a different reality. It's the Greek word anions. So we have cosmos and we have anions. It refers to a system of things. A system of things. While cosmos can be seen, anion cannot be seen. Because anion refers to attitudes. Attitudes. Anion refers to a system of behavior. A system of behavior. The God of this world. Jesus calls him the prince or the ruler of this world. The word world there is the word age. He's the prince of this age. Now that word, the wars, is actually the times. The times. Because Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. Put it up for me. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. Hath in this last day spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the wars. Next verse. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. We understand through faith that the walls were framed. The walls, they were framed by the word of God. So now he gives you an idea. That the things that were made were made of things that do not appear. So anions are never for things you can see. They are for things that do not appear. So sometimes we say you are worldly. Why do we say some Christians are worldly? Some churches, if you go with a Rolex wristwatch, they say you are worldly. You wear gold and diamonds as necklace or earrings. They say you are worldly. Any car above Volkswagen Beetle is worldly. The only holy car is a Volkswagen Beetle. You wear cover shoes. You are worldly. It is sandals that is holy. I'm teaching good. You wear a jean trouser. It is worldly. It is only material trouser, <laughs> cutting material trouser that is holy. Isn't that funny? I say, isn't that funny? Yes. Well, we'll get there in a bit. So he said, I have been crucified to the world. And the world to me. Don't forget that scripture. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, but spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Next verse. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So there is a spirit that now walks in. In the children of disobedience. Referring to a spiritual principle. A spiritual principle. 
So when you say the world, he is not referring to things. He is referring to the attitude and the motive behind the use of things. The attitude and the motive behind the use of things. Look at Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Please pay attention. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Imagine if that term means don't be conformed to this earth. That means you will have to be given a space suit. You see that? So when it says world is different from earth. Because for you to be healthy, your body has to, be, has to conform to the earth. How many of you observe that what man needs to survive grows from the earth? Because man's body was taken from the earth. The more natural and organic your diet is, the healthier you are. The healthier you are. The more artificial your diet, the more plastic you are. Oh yes. The closer to nature you are, the healthier you are. The more you are to, to industrialization, the weaker you become. Oh, yes. That's why today is such a is such luxury for you to have a home by the sea. It's luxury and very expensive, which is actually supposed to be normal for people. That's why today when somebody goes on vacation and goes to seasides and makes photographs, in you something tells you that is where you're supposed to be. That's why you keep looking at the picture, looking at the picture and dreaming of when you can be in such an environment. True or false? Because inside you something tells you that an environment is healthy for me. That environment is, is, is my, it's my habitation. Men are gradually becoming weaker because industrialization and civilization has drawn men away from nature. Meanwhile, man's body came from the earth and man's body requires the earth to survive everything that cures the human body grew from the earth everything that cures the human body teaching good so when he says do not be conformed to this world he's not talking about the earth because you need to conform to the earth the more conformed to the earth you are the healthier you are Teaching good here. Now, pay attention. It's important for you to also realize that when he says, be not conformed to this world, he is not referring to things. Then he said, but be transformed. He now tells you by what? Transformation by the renewing of your mind. So the world is referring to is in the mind. The world is referring to is in the mind. It is the thinking pattern. When we say worldly music, what is worldly music? <laughs> what is worldly music? Someone says, I can't sing worldly music. And I say to him, but you sing the national anthem. <laughs> 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 
Somebody say, worldly music is music not given by the Spirit of God. Really? Didn't you sing, twinkle, twinkle, little star? How I wonder what you are. Up above the wall so high. Like a diamond in the sky. I remember my rhymes, man. Didn't you, did the Spirit of God give that? The more we are together, together, together. The more we are together, the happier we shall be. Didn't you sing that? Is that worldly music or is that Christ music? Worldly music. Music is music. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Music is music. Iwaka, 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 Iwaka is music. It can be sung for, for Don Williams and it can be sung for Majek Fashek. Iwaka, Iwaka. And it can be sung in church for Holy Ghost lyrics. Dun, 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 dun. Iwaka. <laughs> Worldly music is that music whose lyric does not glorify Christ. The lyrics don't glorify Christ. So when he says, be not conformed to this world, he told you. The mind. The world has to do with the mind. The thinking. Look at 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. 1 John chapter 5 verse number 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. So it's referring to the world. The world there is not the earth. The world there is not things. The world there is a thinking pattern. Look at 1 John chapter 5 verse 19. 1 John 5 19. Glory to God. 1 John chapter 5 verse 19. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lieth in the wicked one. Lieth in the wicked one. So that world there is a system of thought. A system of thinking. So that means the flesh and the world can be interchangeably used. The flesh and the world. So that means... The battle with the flesh is not a battle with your nature. The battle with the flesh is not a battle with your nature. The struggle with the flesh is how a Christian or a believer copes in the midst of an ungodly thought pattern. The battle with the flesh is how a Christian or a believer copes in the midst of an ungodly thinking pattern, ungodly mindset. How Christians cope in the midst of an ungodly mindset. That's where the struggle or the battle is. That's why he said, the works of the flesh are manifest. Manifest means things you can see and you can perceive. So the flesh is not in you. For instance, the brother in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 who had his father's wife and comes to her with her to church. Very bad brother. And Paul said, I am absent yet present with you in the spirit. I judge. And I deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh 
not the destruction of his flesh. The flesh. The flesh. Not his flesh. This, the flesh. That thought pattern. That thinking pattern. That system of thinking. He didn't say his flesh. That's why he said, if you sow to the flesh, not your flesh, to the flesh, to that pattern of thinking, you shall of that pattern of thinking reap corruption. Are you still here? Yeah. So he's referring to an idea, a system, a behavioral pattern. So when we say a Christian is worldly, it's not any other thing but the fact that he is conforming to how people think who are not in Christ. A believer is getting more and more at home with the mindset of people that are not in Christ. He is becoming relaxed. The mindset of non-godly people has become a comfort place for that Christian. So that brother is becoming conformed to this world. You can wear no earrings. You can cover your face like a ninja. You know ninja? Oh. You can wear a hijab and cover everywhere minus your two eyes and still be very worldly. You can wear earrings, dress very royal and expensive. Gold and diamonds all over your body because you can afford it. And be very spiritual. It's not in things. It's in a system of thinking. I'm teaching good. Worldliness is a mindset. Before it is a behavior. It is first of all a mindset. Again, the flesh is not the body. Don't forget James chapter 2 verse 26. James chapter 2 verse 26. Put it up for me. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So once the spirit is not in the body, the body is dead. Which means that the body doesn't have a life of its own. The body doesn't have a life of its own. So if the spirit is not in the body, the body cannot exist on its own. The body doesn't have a life of its own, so the body cannot do things of its own accord. Your body cannot just stand up and say, I want to stroll around. Your body cannot just stand up and say, I want to carry that phone that is not my own. Your body cannot just stand up and say, I like that girl, I'm going to go after her. No, your body has no life of its own. Therefore, it cannot function on its own. So the body must be used. It must be yielded to do what it does. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. Pay attention. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Which means that you determine what happens in your body. He says, sin shall not reign in your mortal body. Because you see, your body cannot act on its own. So the body cannot be the flesh. 
When we say the flesh and we say the world, we are referring to two concepts of the same principle. The flesh, the world, two concepts of the same principle. The flesh and the world. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 again. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. Wow. So the body is not the problem because the body is under control and under influence. So where the believer has the issue with the walk in the spirit or with the walk in the flesh. Because notice, he says, since you live in the spirit, that means you are already alive in the spirit. That means you are already alive in the spirit. Doesn't mean you will walk in the spirit automatically. So since you are alive in the spirit, walk, you are alive in the spirit, now you take responsibility to walk in the spirit. Walking in the spirit, therefore, is when your thoughts and your mind align with the nature of God in you. Walking in the spirit is when your thoughts and your mind aligns with God's nature in you. So that's why he said, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the lust of the flesh are evident things we can see. In fact, the way he puts it, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 is very interesting. Put it up for me. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. That is our war is not natural. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. He is dealing with preaching here. The warfare is the preaching of the gospel. That's warfare. Look at verse 5. Oh, I love this. Casting down imaginations through preaching and teaching. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought. That's where the war is. Every thought. The war is not in the market square. The war is not in the farm in the village. Casting down imagination. Bringing down thoughts that came from the world system and influence your behavior. Now those thoughts have to be brought down if there will be a change of behavior. And those thoughts can only be brought down through the preaching of the gospel. So warfare is not done on your knees. Warfare is done on your foot as you preach. The preaching of the gospel is warfare. Casting down images formed by ungodly words. Bringing thoughts of fear, thoughts of condemnation, thoughts of defeat, thoughts of guilt. And every thought that tries to deprive you of the riches of redemption. Every thought, every mindset that takes you back again to bondage, to fear. 
pulling them down by the teaching and the preaching of God's word. Not on your knees, on your food. Honey, you remember that's what Dr. T.L. Osborne told us many years ago in London. We were hanging out with Dr. T.L. Osborne. And we were privileged, you know, to spend that kind of time with him. And then he looked at mama and I and he said, you don't do warfare. Even though I didn't understand what he said at that time. Until many years after. He said to me, you don't do warfare on your knees. You do warfare on your food. What? What is he talking about? It didn't make sense, but I kept it in one compartment of my mind. Years after, I understood what he meant. Warfare is not kneeling down and yanongangangangangang. No, the real warfare is when you engage mindsets, when you start teaching, and the thoughts of religion, long-standing religion, and the thoughts of wrong teaching that have been constructed inside people for 40, 50 years. That's the only thing they know. And then now you come against it with preaching. They fight it. You push. They fight. You push. You pray. You come back again. You push. And eventually it collapses. Their eyes open. Oh, it's true. Heaven is not at last. Heaven is at first. I'm teaching good. Mindsets, thought patterns that exalt itself above the knowledge of the finished work of Christ. Teaching good. You know, that's why our ministry comes under a lot of warfare. That's why many people don't like what we do. You know, because we are coming against thoughts, long-standing thoughts. How can the Tadamina say what a baptism is not in the Bible? They've been baptizing people before he was born. When did he start reading Bible? That's war. <laughs> How can Dr. Damina say sin cannot take a man to hell? That's why I stopped listening to him. That's why I stopped listening to him. Because that message is antichrist. <laughs> they don't even know the meaning of antichrist. So if they want to know the meaning of antichrist, they should go and study antibiotics. If they understand antibiotics, they may understand antichrist. I'm teaching good. Say, I used to follow Dr. Damina until he said communion is not New Testament. How? <laughs> warfare, brother. That's warfare. That's a war zone. That's a war zone. And when we get in there, we engage their thought pattern. We bring strong arguments. We bring a strong apologia. We set up our defense and pull the rug under their feet and leave them on flat floor. Against such, there is no law. <laughs> Somebody start, said, but I thought the preaching of the gospel is supposed to be a message of peace. Yes, there can only be peace after war. It is called peacekeeping force. Force peace. Force peace. Why did he say you shod your feet? Not your hand. It's your feet that you shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So the gospel of peace is in your leg. And God shall bruise Satan under your feet. Your feet that is peace is bruising Satan. May God give you understanding. Say that Dr. Damina is very troublesome. Look at my forehead now. Can't you see? Even the hair has run away. Too much trouble. 
Wahala woto woto. Violence. Jesus didn't die in vain. We were born for this mission. To defend the integrity and the sanctity and the sacredness of the gospel of Christ. And in our lifetime, it is happening real time. Somebody shout, I hear, I hear. Sit down first, sit down first. So when he's talking about the world and the flesh, it's a system of thinking, a way people think. And they come to us by virtue of information. Thoughts. They come to us by virtue of information. Our mindset is set by information available to us. Things we listen to. Things we hear. Things that come to us. No Christian naturally does wrong. You didn't hear that. No child of God naturally does wrong. No believer naturally does wrong. He doesn't have the nature for wrongdoing again. No believer has the nature to do wrong naturally. That's why 1 John chapter 3 verse number 9. 1 John chapter 3 verse number 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. The word seed is the word sperma. 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 The seed of God abides in him. Sperma is spelled as S-P-E-R-M-A. In the Greek, it is the word for genes. Genes. You have a heredity that came from God. Say with me everybody very loud. I hail from God. There's no sin in me. The life of God is in me right now. So you are not struggling with a nature. You don't have two natures. Light and darkness inside. No. You don't have two natures. How many of you have seen a dog man before? Dog man. <laughs> Have you ever seen a dog man? Have you seen a dog? Have you seen a man? Have you seen a dog man? So a believer cannot have light and darkness inside. Just like you cannot have dog man. If there can be no dog man, why do you think Satan and God can live in the same accommodation? Even in the natural, does light and darkness live in the same environment? The entrance of light is the exit of darkness. God is light. Satan is the God of darkness. They can live together in the same house. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So to think that God and Satan can live inside one person is a wrong theology. Say with me again, I have the life of God in me. Philemon 1.6 That the communication of your faith will be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. When he said, don't be conformed to this world. That word in, he, in Romans 12.2 is the word suchematizo. In the Greek. It means to adapt yourself. Beside your nature. Suchematizo. To adapt yourself. Beside your nature. Like. You know. How many of you know sheep? Sheep. Sheep. 
You know sheep? Sheep. S U H E E P. Sheep. sheep. You know sheep? Okay. How many of you know that sheep is white? How many of you know that? How many of you know that sheep likes clean environment? How many of you know that? You've been around animals, right? When a sheep falls in mud, the sheep starts crying. The sheep starts crying because the sheep knows it has entered what is not compatible with its nature until the owner comes and pull it out. How many of you know pig? P I U G. You know pig? How many of you know that when a pig falls inside mud, it says more? <laughs> more it will say in fact this is my spa nowhere has been comfortable like this because mud is the environment of sheep death i mean pig but a sheep likes clean places by nature a child of god cannot stay in sin it is not your environment once you fall inside, you start crying for help. Inside you, your nature starts crying out, help, help, help. That's why you can't be comfortable. That's why you can't have peace. That's why you can't have rest. Because you know you are in a place that you don't belong. But when a sinner enters sin, he pops champagne. To celebrate. Because he belongs there. I'm teaching good. Sell me very loud. I'm born of God. The spirit of God. Dwells in me. You cannot sin. You can't sin. Your seed abides in you. You are incorruptible seed. Incorruptible sperma. Genes and chromosomes. See, I know how to love us. Have you realized that the most powerful thing in the world today, something that even salvation from God did not alter, is your ability to think. Even salvation, you are born again, right? But you are born again did not alter your thinking process. You are allowed to do something about your thinking by yourself. It didn't alter. So, Jesus washed your sins, but did not wash your brains. He didn't wash your brains. You used to ride bicycle before you were born again. Now that you are born again, you can still ride bicycle. Huh? You used to drive car before you got born again. Now that you are born again, the new things that came did not affect your ability to drive a car. So he washed your sins he didn't wash your brain, allows you to remold your brain by his word. He left your mind for you so you can use it. He wants to use your mind by his spirit. So if you leave your mind to, to embrace thought patterns that are not in the spirit, you will become worldly. If you leave your mind to embrace thought patterns that are not in the spirit of God, you will become a worldly person. So the battle is not inside. The battle we have is with things that come from outside. The battle is not inside you. The battle is with things that are bombarding you from the environment. Television, music, people's talk, things you read, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Things are bombarding your mind. 
That is where you win or lose your walk in the spirit. If you are not careful, if you pay attention too much to Facebook, you will soon be a junky Christian. You'll be full of junk. You'll be so full of junk that it will never look like you were born again. Because social media has a lot of trash human beings in their numbers. The most jobless people on earth live there. And jobless people are creators of nonsense. And where you spend more time, you begin to pick up habits. It's a very wonderful tool. But at the same time, very devastating. I'm teaching good tonight. Because by nature, we are God's children. So the battle is not inside. The body is not your problem. James told us that your words, your words can bridle your body. The truth is this. Your body responds to your words. Your body responds to your words. Whatever you tell your body, your body will respond to. Words, very powerful. That's why when your body starts developing symptoms and you lay hands on yourself and say, no, 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 not here. This body, you've been bought with a prize. Lekota manga. Disease and sickness cannot stay here. In the name, as you begin to talk to your body, as you begin to talk, you see your body complying because it doesn't have a mind of its own. Your body doesn't have a mind of its own. It is what you tell it that it will do. So if you tell your body, break down, be sick, break down. Uh -uh. What is he waiting for? Commander has sent signal. And all the systems in the body will obey. It will obey. Mind what you say. Your words are principles of control over your body. Your words are principles of control over your body. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew twelve thirty four. So, I am talking about words that control you. So, the influence that comes to us, your body is not the problem. It is what you tell your body that it does. It is the evident things in Galatians 5.19. The things you are exposed to. The things that you let stay in your mind. Because your soul is where you have your will. Your soul is where you have your emotions. And those emotions and will control your body. That's why Paul will say, I bring my body under. I'm the one that put it under. My body doesn't go under by itself. I put my body under. You will have to put your body under by yourself. He said, let's have him preach to others. I become a castaway. It's your responsibility. How many of you know, you decide where you take your body to? Eh? Okay, look at this. Look at this. Who is moving the body? Okay. I don't want to go. Let my body carry me there. It cannot. In my mind, I'm seeing myself by this pulpit. So, in my mind, I send instruction to my body. And my body begins to move there. Nobody moves until instructions are released. To the sensors of the body. Oh yes. Oh yes. You know a guy came to this church that could not urinate. 
Every time his urine gather, they will take him to hospital. Then they will pull out the urine by medical help. I told you the story, honey. So he came here on one of the meetings and I, we spent time to pray for him for two weeks. Got him filled with the Holy Ghost. He began to kidnap an agadog or the gobosh. All over this place. He was tonguing anyhow. But he couldn't urinate. Then faith came alive. He told me, Pastor, I will urinate. Pastor, I will urinate. I said, yes. Pastor, before I come back next week, I will urinate by myself. He said, went home, the urine wouldn't come out. So he, an idea came to him. That's the spirit of God. He went and sat down in front of a tap. As they opened the tap, and water was coming out of the tap. He started urinating. <laughs> that is when he saw the way water was coming out of the tap. It sent a signal to the sensors of his body that control urine. He too started pouring water out. What are you talking about? The human body. The human body responds to stimuli. Is that correct? You know my medical science needs medical support. The body responds to stimuli. As, as, as you send signal with words, those words will trigger actions and reactions. And as you begin to train your word, your body to listen to you, a time will come, no matter the disease, if you say, not here, your body will push it out. What are you talking about? Get your body used to your voice. Things have been talking to your body that is not you. Your body has started responding to television. Your body has started responding to radio. It does not know your voice. Start training your body to know your voice. So that when you say body, not that side, this side, your body will say yes sir. Some of you don't talk to your body. You need to learn to talk to your body. Your body obeys what you say. You know, the word gets to our mind by influence. There's nothing that gets to your mind that you did not allow. Nothing just enters. We allow influence in our lives by association. Never ever think that people you relate with cannot influence you. Never think like that. The Bible teaches expressly how we should conduct ourselves in the world. The Bible teaches in Acts of the Apostles, as they got born again, they began to relate with believers. Believers were relating with believers. That's a fundamental thing. You change association, and as you change association, you change the influence over your life. And when believers begin to grow, Paul began to say, even believers who are not spiritually minded in that context, he said, don't relate with them. Because evil communication corrupts good manners. 1 Corinthians 15.33 The word manners means a conduct you have developed over time. That's manners. And that conduct you have developed over time can change because of the kind of relationships you are keeping. Oh yes? It can change. It can change. So walking in the spirit is not a difficult thing. It deals with not walking in the flesh. You already know what worldliness is, right? Thoughts and ideas you get from people that are not born again. Association and thought patterns that comes externally to us, waiting for us to admit them. Whatever you feed your mind with, that is how you are going to behave. Whatever you feed your mind with, that is how you are going to behave. 
Listen. No information is neutral. Write that in capital letters. No information is neutral. None. Every information has the power of influence. It can influence you. So it's now left for you to know which one you allow. It's left for you to know which one you allow. And how I many of you know? <laughs> Look at me, everybody. Right thinking produces right believing. Right thinking produces right believing. Right believing produces right living. It begins with thinking. As a man thinketh, so is he. Right thinking produces right believing. Right believing commands right speaking. And right speaking produces right living. You shall have what you say. I'm going to add to it. Right thinking produces right believing. Right believing produces right speaking. Right speaking produces right living. But hey, right hearing produces right thinking. Right hearing produces right thinking that produces right believing that produces right speaking that produces right living. Wrong hearing produces wrong believing that produces wrong thinking that produces wrong believing that produces wrong speaking that results in wrong living. It all begins with what you let in. Who do you allow talk to you? Who are you talking to? Is that not a question God asks Adam? Adam say I'm naked. God say who told you? Who are you talking to? Because your belief system is a product of who is talking to you. Adam, who are you talking to? Because I didn't tell you naked. So obviously somebody has given you an information that you have believed. You have believed it so much that you are hiding. You are not only hiding. You have believed it so much that you want to educate me who created you. Because I didn't tell you you are naked. Now you are giving me an information that didn't originate from me. I'm naked. Adam, you are talking to the wrong people. And how many of you know, the first time Satan and Adam met in Eden, the first question Satan asked Eden, uh, Adam is, what did God say? They didn't greet. Hello? Hi? Hi? No. What did God say? Because the only thing that can keep you from me is your knowledge of what God said. Then Satan discovered they didn't know accurately what God said. So he played around that and took care of them. Who is talking to you? Who are you talking to? Who told you? That you are naked. You have been talking to the wrong people. You have been discussing with the wrong company. You are hanging around the wrong crowd. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the wellspring, the forces, the influences, and the issues of life. I'm reading from different translations. The issues, the forces, the influences, the wellspring of life comes out of your heart. How do you guard your heart? Your heart will not produce evil. 
Because your heart has the spirit of God. So it will produce evil if you allow evil in. So what corrupts come from outside? Information. So how do you guard your heart? Eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate. Those gates are the access to the heart of man that determines the production in a man's life. They determine the production in a man's life. Stay with me. I'm, I'm almost done. Guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart. Protect your heart by protecting your eyes and protecting your ears and protecting your mouth. A lack of self-control there. There are things you shouldn't be doing not because they are wrong but because you're controlling yourself. Sometimes you can decide to talk less. It's part of self-control. You can talk plenty, but that day you decide, I'm going to just talk briefly today with anybody. Self-control means to delay immediate gratification for a more noble cause. Fasting, for instance, is self-control. You can fast television. You can fast social media. You can fast your phone, you can fast food, you can even fast from sleep. When you start sleeping anyhow, and you're losing money, you need sleep fasting. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand. So shall your poverty come with AK-45. Is it 47 or 40? 47. So shall your poverty come with cruise missiles and carry you into captivity. Sleep, too much sleep and poverty are interconnected. Too much sleep. Sleep is good. But too much sleep if or no. Fast away television. Nothing controls me. Say it three times. Two. Three. Say in Christ. I live by the word. Nothing outside the word of God. Controls my life. So you know what walking in the spirit is? Walking in the spirit simply means. To do the word of God. To do the word of God. There's a fruit of the spirit called goodness. Galatians 5.22. Goodness. We want to see the characteristics of goodness. That word goodness is used twice as a noun. Four times as a feminine noun. Goodness is the word agathosin in the Greek. Agathosin. A-G-A-T-H-O-S-Y-N-E. Agathosin, A-G-A-T-H-O-S-Y-N-E, Agathosin. You will find that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 9, Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, Romans chapter 15 verse 14. I go over the list again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 9. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Romans chapter 15 verse 14. It actually means when you are inherently good. Inherently. When inside you is a quality of being. Where you have the word benevolence. That is you are a naturally benevolent person. Goodness. It refers to doing the right things. Goodness refers to deeds. D-E-D-S. Things you will do. The word good... It's in Galatians 6, 9. Do good to all men. 
That word good is something beautiful. Something praiseworthy. Something beautiful. Something praiseworthy. So goodness, which is in the fruit of the spirit, is an action. Doing good to all men. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth who went about doing good. It's a fruit of the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse, I mean Matthew 5, 43 to 45. You have heard it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Next verse. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? Next verse. That you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. Bless them that curse you. Romans 12, 21. Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. What does it mean to overcome evil with good? Verse 19. Romans 12, 19. Same context. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Next verse. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Do what? If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. You know, ignorance is not good, honey. You know, some people, when they read this verse, they will not say, Father, all my enemies, I heap coals of fire on their head. I heap coals of fire on their head. Meanwhile, they don't know what coals of fire is. They are thinking of firewood in the kitchen. That word coals of fire is from Proverbs 25, 22. Proverbs 25, 22. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. For heaping coals of fire on somebody's head, the Lord shall reward thee. So what is coals of fire? It originates from Leviticus 16.12. It's Moses that has that language. Leviticus, and he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord. And he stands full of sweet incense, beating small, and bring it in within the veil. It was used in the temple in the atonement to melt the wrath of God concerning sin. So coals of fire means you are bringing forgiveness. When you heap coals of fire on somebody's head, you are baptizing him with forgiveness. So when you pray and say, I heap coals of fire on your head, what you are saying is receive forgiveness. <laughs> that is how goodness overcomes evil. Light overcomes darkness. So goodness is active. You bless people in goodness. Don't just pray for people that hurt you. Take action. Do good to them. We are born of God. We are not of this world. For, listen carefully everybody. And I'm going to deal with this tomorrow. Forgiveness is the foundation and strength of every human relationship. Forgiveness is the foundation and strength of every human relationship. When you find true friends, either in business, ministry, career, or couples, that have sustained their marriage is because of sacrifice. And that sacrifice that sustains a marriage is in forgiveness. Is in, that's where the sacrifice is. 
two people who know how to forgive will keep their relationship for a long time. Learn to forgive. Forgiveness is an act. Learn to do it at home, in church, in your place of work. Don't marry somebody no matter the thunderous tongues he speaks who does not forgive people. That is, that brother that stands to pray and he will do don't marry him if he finds it difficult to forgive people after you marry him you will find that those tongues are for public display you know they talk and for house that's why the tongues are dramatic because if it's a lifestyle, you can't be talking those tongues as a lifestyle. People speak in tongues as a lifestyle. Their tongues are normal tongues. Because you can speak it for a long time. But the type that somebody will start like this. Brigada, brigada, brigada. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Why yo? May God give you understanding. It's called revelation knowledge. Don't ever forget there are no perfect friendships. Anywhere there are no perfect friendships. It is only forgiveness that makes the relationship perfect. You will need forgiveness with your kids. You will need forgiveness with your parents. You will need forgiveness with your brethren you will need forgiveness with your husband or your wife. You will need forgiveness for your pastor and pastor, you will need forgiveness for your church members. And when you forgive, let it go. Like it never existed. E.W. Kenyon said, Agape does not go to divorce courts. Agape does not go to divorce courts. We can build great relationships with forgiveness. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ear no bars. Huh? I'm willing to see if I'm here. Doom, doom, doom. Yato. Stand on your feet, shot glory. Turn to your neighbor say, neighbor, we can relate till Jesus comes with forgiveness. Forgiveness is sacrifice in relationships. You're my brother, you're my sister. I love you. I will protect you. I will support you. I will defend you. I will strengthen you. I will rebuke you if I have to, to make you live right. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. Say, brother, I, will, I cannot afford to lose you. Therefore, I will fight to make sure I keep you in this kingdom. Together, we will preach, we will preach, we will raise the dead, we will shake nations, and we will take over territories. I didn't hear that amen on a note of finality. Glory! Father, we rejoice that tonight revelation knowledge is growing big in this house. Your word coming alive in our hearts. Mindsets corrected. Thought patterns corrected. Whatever is not planted by God rooted out. Sickness, disease flushed out. Bodies healed. In the name of Jesus. And we give you praise for the blessing. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. 
Grab your honor offerings. Let's give and rejoice so we can join Mr. Michael Bush for Ask the Counselor now. Grab your offerings. Online community, the banking details are scrolling. Television, the banking details are scrolling. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush will read the bank accounts for you in the next few minutes. But it's an honor and a joy to serve all of you the grace of God all the time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Grab your offerings, lift them up. Let's pray. Father, we, we lift up our hands in thanksgiving, in worship. And along with our hands lifted in worship, we have an offering to honor your word and to honor the work of faith taking place in our hearts via the teaching of your word. We stand in faith tonight and we believe that through this house, this word goes round the nations of the earth. In the name of Jesus, men come to the knowledge of the truth. And we rejoice that in our lifetime, we will see this gospel prevail in every man's world. And we give you praise for the blessing in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Glory! Amen. We're joining Mr. Michael Bush in three minutes for Ask the Council or now. Anywhere on the pulpit, you drop your, your offerings. Hit the music. Let's do it as we worship the risen Lord. Hallelujah. Glory Glory to God. Can we do a little reggae? Hallelujah. I got his awesome. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. You ready? Here we go. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with the wind. Stump power, Lord of God, is an awesome God. Everybody sing that. Our God is an awesome God. From heaven above. From heaven Power. We sing it again. Sing it again. Our God is an awesome God. Yeah. Our God is an awesome God. Yeah. 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 Listen, listen. And He reigns. Yes, He reigns. From heaven in me with we stum power, Lord of God is an awesome. Everybody sing, say, is an awesome God. From heaven in me with we, yes, sir. One more time, say, our God is an awesome God. Yes, an awesome God. Thing has come down, every stronghold has been broken. We were the victor's crown, we as ever come. Everybody, sing with me, sir. Every high thing, every stronghold. Stronghold has been broken. He swears to be just crown. He will overcome. He will. One more time, one more time. Every high thing has come down. Every stronghold has been broken. He swears to be just crown. He will overcome. He will overcome. Ask the council of staffs now. Please be seated. Let's just drive the boat a little further ashore. Power City International is the account name. There are two bank accounts. UBA is the first shot I will take on this edition of the program. 139-26465. 139-26465. That's for UBA. Account name, Power City International. It's the same account name for Zenith. 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. 10, 12, 36, 59, 12.
Power City International, Zenith. Okay, I don't know. Um, looks like we can try to squeeze in a couple of calls on this edition of the program. You're calling from outside Nigeria. Remember, plus two, three, four. Otherwise, simply 0806-800-9939. You want to send us an SMS or two. It's still the same fashion, plus two, three, four. If you are SMSing from outside of Nigeria, otherwise, simply 0703 Six nine one eight six four two. You want to send us an email or two? It's ask the counselor now at gmail.com for sponsorship, for partnership, and for support to keep our program on the air. Plus two three four. That's the hotline of the program. If you are, you know, hotlining from outside of Nigeria, otherwise simply zero eight zero three two seven five six one zero four. You send an email or two to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. There, of course, is DR. My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor I.J. Quera and the production team, Global Baba Father, our spiritual father is on set. Help me welcome Dr. Abel Damina. The intercontinental Mr. Bush. Global Baba, so nice to see you so again. So good to have you here this evening, man. Yes, Global Baba was spent last night in Kenya, so we'll be getting started from Kenya. But before we do that, can we pray for the world from Kenya? Let's pray together. Father, we rejoice that we have this opportunity to receive answers to prayer. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for Kwaibom State. Thank you for the rest of the world. We decree that the gospel continues to thrive. The word of God growing mightily and prevailing in the nations. Disciples are raised. Ministers are equipped. The gospel is preached like never before. Souls are saved in their numbers. And we pray that the devil will not overrun our cities. We put a stop to his antics and his strategies and devices. We expunge them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we thank you that your word prevails and souls are saved in their numbers. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. No, but let's get off the ground. Last night, um, before we ran out of the program, we made sure we were in... Uh, in Kenya, and that's where we spent the night. So we're going to be starting there from something anonymous. Hello, my dear Global Baba, Daddy. I listen to your audio tapes all the time, and I'm always blessed. My faith in Christ was dying, like I didn't know where to go from there. But listening to your sermon, I became alive again, and I'm led to write to you so you can be my father in leading me to the fullness of Christ so I don't get robbed of what Christ has done for me. Yours sincerely, Henry Oleyede. Well, Henry, thank you for writing in. We will make sure we include in our discipleship program. Pastor Matthew needs to take care of that email. And just keep following. There's a lot to learn. And as you stay in the world, the devil never sees you forever. Thank okay. You. Yes, so Global Baba from Kenya, we still move uh, to another part on the, another country on the eastern coast. Uganda, be nice. Hello, Global Baba. This is Maurice writing a game from Uganda. Daddy, please help me with this common saying among Christians that the blood is against you and blood of Jesus when casting out demons or praying for the sick. Are they correct doctrinally? I love you, Daddy, and I believe God. I will see your face soon to hug you and touch you because I love you so much. Actually, Global Baba, nowadays when I mention anything doctrinal, people are so shocked in the way that you have um, taught me to explain a wonder. Is it because of your global barber that your eyes are really this opened and you are saved from ignorance because you have rightly divided the scriptures for me? Greetings from Uganda, global barber. Wow, so glad to hear from you in Uganda. Well, it depends on the understanding that the people have when they say the blood is against you. As long as they are not thinking of liquid, as long as they are not thinking of all of that, when we talk about the blood, we're talking about the life of, God, of Christ. When we talk about the blood, we're talking about the totality of his sacrificial work. If it's in that premise, you say the blood is against you, Satan, that is right. But if it is on other, you know, on doctrinal premises, then it is not right. What makes it right is the understanding you have of what you're saying. So if you're saying the blood is against you, Satan, because what you're communicating is a finished product of his sacrificial work. Then that's putting a resistance on the devil by virtue of what Christ has done. Okay, Glo Baba, from there, we take this anonymous entry for the road. Hello, Global Baba and the Intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. 
Daddy, I just love what Christ is doing. The love that is in your ministry is really showing even on set. Your sense of humor with Brother Michael Bush. You guys are the 18. Thank you for your message. On offense the other night, it was encouraging. I have a quick question, sir. Why do so many famous ministers of the gospel, wealthy ones in particular, like to say that the Lord Jesus Christ in his time in ministry before the cross was a rich man? They said he had gold as the baby given by the, uh, I think by the three visitors or so, and they even crowned it up by saying he owned a donkey. At that time, a donkey was like Rolls Royce, Lobo Baba. This to me doesn't make sense. It sounds like they are trying to justify their uh, riches in the world and media critics, which makes it sound more shady, like ill-gotten gains. Because when I read my Bible, the donkey was not even his. Second Corinthians 8, 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that through you, through his poverty, he might become rich. It would make sense if they said, I am rich because he took my place of poverty just like he became sin, so that we become the righteousness of God in Christ. Second Corinthians 5, 21. Am I missing something, Global Baba? Please shed some light on this. Thank you. Luzolo Kamte. Okay, it doesn't tell us where it's writing from, but we just claim somewhere from South Africa, from the east of Africa. Well, very true. You know, those preachers will have to say that in order for what they are saying to get to you. But if you're a good student of the Bible, you know that Jesus was, was poor, very poor on it. When he was born, there was no even place in the inn for him. He was born in a manger because he didn't come to display affluence. He came to bear our sins and die on our behalf. So preachers who say such things are just trying to be spooky and funny. I used to say it too back in the days when I used to preach that prosperity nonsense. You know, I used to say it. In fact, I used to say my own. I even wonder where I got them from. And people used to clap and shout at my stupidity. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad I'm free from it. And we keep praying for them to be free from it. Jesus was poor in every sense of poverty. He didn't have where to stay. People had to give him food. People had to give him a place to stay. People had to give him a donkey to ride. He was so poor that even when he died, he could not afford a grave. That's how poor he was. So don't let those preachers, you know, use their greed. If you remember, I said all these materialistic preachers, when they read the Bible, they view scriptures with materialistic lenses. And that is why, you know, what they preach doesn't really add up at the end of the day when you have somebody who is sound in his thinking. Producer, 14.5 small minutes before it's top of the hour. We can just um, look at the possibility of allowing a couple of calls, even as we make progress from the east to the central part of Africa. Cameroon, be nice. This one is written by Obunaya Waktukurubu. Um, he's back on the program from the southwest of uh, Cameroon. Glorious greetings, Global Baba and Global Mama in the house and the intercontinental Michael Bush. More grace to you for saving us with Global Baba. My greetings to my brethren in Christ. Thank you, Global Baba, for all the answers, for making us live above our doubts and fears. I love you, my spiritual father. So at least I need more clarity concerning the words revelations, uses concerning the beasts, and I don't understand that, and the 24 elders. Does it mean there is uh, glorified animals like mortal body? Help me to understand that communication. Thank you. I'm grateful. Global Baba. Well, like I always say, I'm not in a hurry to talk about the book of Revelation with people who have not even understood the basic, simple gospel of Christ. So my advice, get back to your Bible. Don't look for animals and beasts. Look for Christ. When you have seen enough Christ, you will understand the usage of animals and beasts as figures of speech to bring out the message of Christ. Still from Cameroon, still from that same Bonaya, uh, it's clarified this time that he's writing from Kumba, K-Town, in the southwest province of the Republic of Cameroon. And it says, Global Baba, this is my testimony confession, sir. Awesome greetings, Global Baba and Global Mama, and to the awesome brethren seated in heavenly places. Global Baba, this is serious. I can't forgive myself if I don't call you my father or you don't call me your son. After listening to the teaching concerning the promises of God, parts... 13 to 17, I really grew big and big in my inside after listening to the parts of the series. That's Genesis 3, 24. Gives me more joy in my soul that man was not driven out like a fool 
in, from the Garden of Eden. But instead, the angels were created um, for man and to save man uh, into God's will by turning the heart of man back to the tree of life. So that today, this written word has been fulfilled in my insight. I mean, deep understanding came to my insight because I'd been thinking, how could God just get angry like ordinary men because of little disobedience of man, knowing full well that man has not grown into that revelation knowledge of him that gave him instructions. Thank you, sir. My desire is to see you face to face before I sleep in Christ. I love you, my father, because I'm not ashamed to call you father. I'm beginning to have love and passion for the gospel and ministry that has been in me because you've made it so easy for me. And I hear deeply into my heart the gospel of truth and understanding more about the scriptures. Glory to God for what you're teaching now from when I discovered you taught me again from of what you taught me again. Last year, 2021, towards the end of that faithful year, in the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, than what I knew that from your teachings of 2009, as I saw you first on TV. Now, I listen to your teachings from every angle. I can search for them and find them. But the good news is, as I'm writing this now, KLN is on watching at me and me too watching at it, whatever that means. We are both watching each other. Hallelujah. <laughs> More grace, Global Baba Band, the Mr. Michael Bush, for the good works also. Thank you. My youngest, Global Baba, a father that the glory of God has made more, much younger than most of us, the children, or maybe to us, the children, too much of Woto Woto. Uh, has uh, glory to God. You know, my name is Subun, <laughs> and he writes from uh, Kumba in southwest Cameroon. Global Baba, I sure would take your thoughts on this. First, though, this caller. Hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Many thanks for joining us. Where are you calling from? My name is Brother Ezekiel. I'm calling from here in Ngoa, but I start it. Okay, go ahead. Please, I want to ask, I want to appreciate Daddy for what he has been doing. It was wonderful. We really appreciate it. Please, I want to know if we can be praying with the blood of Jesus. Then secondly, can we be praying with... This is my father, with the God of my father. Then secondly, where is the uh, kind of Eden? Because we know Jerusalem, we know the tomb, they are out there, but we don't know about the kind of Eden. Please show more light on it, sir. Thank you, Daddy. Okay, thank you for calling. First of all, you don't plead the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus is not liquid. God has given you a name that is above every name. So the name of Jesus is more than enough for you. Use that name very effectively. Then secondly, where is the Garden of Eden? It is wherever it was. I don't know where it is. I'm not looking for the Garden of Eden. I have come to Mount Zion. I have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. And I'm happy with heavenly Jerusalem. I don't want Eden. The third question. Uh, well, I didn't get his question, but I thought that the third question was the one, the testimony by Obunaya. Okay, no, there's another third one he okay. asked. After the blood, after Eden, there was one more thing he asked for. God of my father, God of my mother. Why do you need a God of your father? Don't you have your own God? <laughs> no, it's wrong. Don't do that. That's idol worship. We have no mediator between us and Christ. Christ is the only mediator between us and God. Nobody has more access to Christ than you. You and Christ are inside each other. Why do you need the God of your father to come between you and Christ? Whatever you ask the father in the name of Jesus, he will do it for you. All those people that are doing God of my father, they are in idol worship. They have not understood the gospel. When you understand the gospel, you will not come to Christ through anybody. God has no stepchildren. God is the father of all of us. I hope that helps you. Now, back to Brother Obonaya. Well, thank you for writing. I'm happy that you're following. Please keep following. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to also meeting you in the flesh very soon. But let me add to you, if you order for the teachings on the book of Revelation, understanding the book of Revelation, it will give you quite a lot to help you understand the fundamentals and to help you understand what the message of that book is. Thank you for writing it. Okay, Global, we'll just take one step or two backwards and look again at uh, this question of God of my father or God of my pastor. Uh, I don't know. While I think it, well, I, I think it, it spoils business for, for 
ministers of the law, those ministers who like to say that, I also think that there's a problem with even Christians themselves. Why yes. do you insist on God of your pastor instead of your own God? No, it's because that's what they have been taught. God. That's the way they have, their mindset has been molded to see that they are inferior to their pastors. Their pastors are superior. So their pastors are closer to God than them. So since their own is far, mm. they come through the God of their father just like praying through Mary mm. is the same thing. So it's idol worship. Well, well, well. Yes. Let's run from that one now. <laughs> you are the one who likes violence. What, what about today's violence? Well, yeah. was it, what, what, did you water rise the violence? Yeah, ba, ba. Eh? Hey, my father. <laughs> because you, are, you announced it yesterday. Yes, Global Baba. Let's go to Durban, <laughs> South Africa. Hello, Global Baba and the Intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. I write from South Africa, Durban. I just want to remain anonymous. I would like to thank God for this special program, Ask the Counselor, that brings clarity to our concern and questions as believers. Global Baba have been following the law and the prophets, series, even the current Sotera 9, which have been a great blessing to my marriage that was going through so much strife and bitterness. When Global Baba spoke of we are first brothers and sisters in Christ before being husband and wife, and all the biblical pieces of advice, that changed the way I looked at and treat my wife. I never knew that Christianity was this sweet and lovely until I started listening to this sound doctrine. Global Baba, my life has really changed through Soteria 9. Global Baba, you made my evening the other day when you led the song. You are my brother, you are my sister. Can't stop singing it. Glory! Glory! Glory. Wonderful. We're glad to hear that. Okay, Global Baba, because of time or the lack of it, let's dash out of the continent of Africa, heading straight to Europe. Italy, be nice to us. Hello, Global Baba, and the intercontinental Michael Bush. I like to remain anonymous. I write from Italy. If I'm not wrong, blasphemy is one of the sins God can't and doesn't forgive, Global Baba. Now, here in Italy, blasphemy is intended as associating the name of God to an animal or to a curse word. Many people over here use it as an exclamation, and in some regions, it's like a normal thing to say. But I know that this kind of blasphemy that's associating the name of God to an animal isn't used in other nations, or at least that's not the way to blaspheme. So now my question is, Global Baba, what is the kind or what is intended as a blasphemy God can't or doesn't forgive? By the way, I've never said anything similar. It's just to know what is really considered as a blasphemy that God can't forgive. Well, you stay with biblical definitions for biblical concepts. So blasphemy within the pages of scripture is the rejection of the sacrifice of Jesus. And that's the only sin that cannot be forgiven. Because since you rejected what Christ did, then you have to do for yourself and your own can never be good enough. And that's why you can't be forgiven. So blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is a rejection of the sacrifice of Jesus. It's not calling some animal names or something. It's the rejection of the sacrifice of Jesus. Global Baba from Italy, quickly, quickly. We're in Germany, in Berlin. Daniel writing, Global Baba, can you clarify Matthew 23, 33? I have been really blessed by your ministry. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Put it up for us on the scripture. Matthew 23, You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Well, that was the message of John the Baptist to the people of his generation. These were people who didn't believe the gospel. And John the Baptist used those figures of speech to describe them. That's all. Okay, Global Baba, let's dash to Solomon Islands on the South Pacific Ocean and then spend the night there. When we come back uh, tomorrow, we'll pick it up from there. Hello, Global Baba. I need your prayers to elevate my real estate business. Things have been tough lately. Thank you. Daddy, Damina, God bless you. Nafi, Solomon Islands. So, okay, Global Baba, I think even with that, prayers as we we'll, round up. We'll pray for all the needs. Father, we pray right now that everyone going through a challenging situation a way of escape is released to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Sick bodies be healed. Amen. Sick bodies be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Intervention of God in circumstances and situations. And we receive testimonies on your behalf. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's the size of our program on this edition. We look forward to another edition tomorrow. Remember, it's 30 Days of Glory 2022, almost coming full cycle. 
My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor I.J. Query, complete with the production team. And now, for the last time on this edition, help me welcome our father. Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental Mr. Bush. Let's celebrate Mr. Bush for serving us tonight. Praise God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for giving us the opportunity to serve you. The grace of God has been amazing and exciting throughout these 30 days of glory. And tomorrow is the last day of 30 days of glory. From Sunday, we begin homecoming 2022. <laughs> glory! You don't want to miss homecoming from Sunday. It's going to be brutal from Sunday to Sunday right here at Power City. And we're expecting all of our citizens from around the world. So many are already in the house. We'll take time to introduce everyone that has traveled down to be part of this 30 Days of Glory and Homecoming on Sunday morning as we open up the chapter for Homecoming 2022. We love you and I want to thank all of you who took the time to share the adverts on the two books on my Facebook page. On Sunday, we'll dedicate the books and make them available for people to buy and begin to have copies of those new very powerful resources that will help you in your work with Christ. If you're here to share the, the, the adverts, please help us share them. It's very, very important. We love you. Looking forward to seeing all of you tomorrow, 6 p.m., GMT plus one on all platforms. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. Amen.